Welcome to Silicon Valley Asian Business Talk. This is Roger Chen from uh, University of San Francisco, Welcome CT. Thank you for joining our interview program. So why don't you briefly introduce yourself? Uh, thank you for having me, Roger. Uh, my name is Chi Tong or CT, and I'm co-founder of Engage Rocket. We've been running this company now for just over six years, and we build smart engagement tools for busy leaders. So um, it's AI-powered performance management and em employee engagement analytics. We help companies like Toyota, uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, and uh, other companies to build a workplace that encourages their people to want to give their best at work. Um, so we serve mid-market companies globally across more than 20 industries uh, and have analyzed uh, over 10 million uh, employee data points. Discussion topic, learning beyond competitors and customers. After you find your initial target, initial segment, and I would like to ask you are like a product uh, innovation or product decisions. So because I went to your website, you already developed several very impressive products. So I'm curious actually for these different products, uh, where did the ideas, you know, uh, come from? Is it mainly come, coming from the customer's suggestions or coming from your anticipated customer needs, your analysis, or even come from competitors' threats or moves, or maybe some kind of combination? So could you share some thaw, thoughts about that? The question was around um, the, I guess, the product innovation process. And right. I think... It has evolved quite a bit, I think, since we, mm -hmm. since we first began. Uh, initially, there was a very high temptation um, to, to look at competitors and say, okay, we've got you know, XYZ company, they've got, they've got this feature, and it seems mm -hmm. to be doing great for them. Everyone's talking about it. Let's, let's go build mm -hmm. that. And then mm -hmm. somebody else, you know, we do a, a bunch of research across six, seven different competitors and say, okay, let's take the best of breed and put something together and make sense mm -hmm. of that. I think over the years, I, I like to think anyway, <laughs> our, our R&D process has become a little bit more uh, refined, a little bit more mature. So mm -hmm. today, I mean, of, of course, we're, we're conscious of what our competitors are doing, but that no longer guides our product roadmap as much. I think mm. now, um, and maybe this is a little bit cliche, like we, we, we do look at our ideal customer profile or ICP and like go very deep and try to understand what exactly is it that their needs are. So we do this, uh, a combination of both uh, existing customer interviews. So we speak to them, look at their usage on the product. Um, we have... You know, we have a certain cadence of, of communication with them that we, we we try to understand like what, what is it that they are trying to solve. And then we also do uh, new customer research. So reaching out to people cold, um, saying, hey, we've got this idea. It's not a product. I'm not trying to sell you anything, but I do want to understand mm. the problems and challenges that you face in this space. Um, and thankfully, there are people who are very kind, uh, willing to share their feedback and, and their insights with us. So that forms the basis of um, where we start generating solutions because we, you know, this, this realization came uh, very late, but, but better late than never, I hope. But we, we had the, uh, the experts at the solution, but the customers are the experts at the problem. So yeah, yeah. Good, very we, good point. Very good point. Yeah. So when we ask and talk to customers, we need them to, we need to be very, selective in how we ask them questions and how we have those conversations to tease out exactly what the problem is that they're facing. So there are a lot of different tools that you can use like five whys and so on, but, but, but really like just being a human and trying to like, just being super curious, like why is it that you, you run your performance management process that way? Who else is involved in it? Uh, what, what are the other stakeholders um, are being uh part of this process like what happens to the results after you come out of it and after you've done this employee survey what why is it that managers are not using the data what, what's the what's the issues and then and then we have to take all of this back and they're going to give us so this is really funny because even while we're just asking why did like we get a lot of uh feature requests almost like you know it'd be great if you guys could have this analytics tool if you could do and 
And then the the temptation initially when we were earlier on was to take that and say, okay, great. Like 20% of customers are asking for this feature. Let's build it. Um, and I think now it's, I think we've gotten a bit better at like taking a step back. And when they tell us this, we are like, okay, exactly. How would that help you? Can you please share? Like I'd love to learn. And then, and then they would then uncover a problem that was maybe hidden. That was not, that didn't come out before. I, I give, I, let me give you an example of this. It's actually a very recent example. We had so many of our customers, they'll come back to us and say, you guys have, you know, you run this amazing analytics on our employee surveys. Um, and then when we distribute the reports to all the managers, for some reason, they're not taking action on the mm. result. And By the way, actually, when you say managers, you mean your own managers or customers' managers, when you say? Our customers' managers. So these okay. are customers of ours. So uh, like a head of HR or chief HR officer would say, hey, you know, CT, um, your product's great, but, you know, I wish you could help me get my managers to do something with the results, like instead of just mm. taking it and putting it off in a shelf somewhere. And, you know, then at that time we were like, okay, this is great. Yes. Tell us more. And they were like, okay, I wish you could have a way for us to track the, the commitments that they make to their team, you know? And then as HR, uh-huh. I can come in and say, I can even grade them and say, uh, this is a five-star action. This is maybe three stars. And then we can imp- help them improve. So this all sounded great to us until we actually built it and put it into market. <laughs> and then we realized that nobody was using it. And, huh. and then, so we had to, had to come back again and say, okay, why is it that managers aren't taking action on their employee survey data? And when we dug further and started talking to managers, we realized it's not that they were not taking action on their employee survey data. They were just not really taking action on anything else within their uh their, their their people manager responsibilities and it was not because of a lack of training because they have been getting a lot of training but it's mm-hmm. never top of mind for them it's always there's always something else that's more urgent you know i've got to make mm-hmm. my numbers um i've got my delivery schedule to make sure that i can i can hit that i have all this backlog of of product features that i need to build whatever it may be and it's not like they, they want to be bad managers but it's just outside their natural business as usual. So it's outside their BAU and it's really difficult for them to, you know, for them, it feels almost like compliance. It's like, oh, HR is asking me to do this. Okay, fine. I'll, if I've got time, I'll go do that. Rather than, you know, this is part of my day-to-day activity. And so with that insight, we started then iterating further. Like what if we could help managers by giving them almost like superpowers? Like we've, we plug this product into their flow of work that helps them be a better people manager by automating away a lot of this uh, people management responsibilities and giving them prompts at a time that they need to uh, take action on, on whatever it may be. So for example, if you're coming up to the quarterly performance review cycle, you need to put in something for your, your employees instead of saying, getting HR coming to tell you, hey, you know, Roger, you got to submit your performance review form. Um, this is all within say Microsoft Teams, right? You have all of this available to you already. And by the way, across the whole quarter, we've automated the feedback collection process such that people that have interacted with, say if I'm your direct report, who have interacted with me, they would have AI help them draft feedback to me that then gets documented, which you can then summarize and, and then insert into my performance review process. So instantly you can focus on becoming a lot better as a, manager by focusing on the human part of it, where like, you know, talking to me, coaching me, mentoring me in the areas that I'm weak at, helping me develop my strengths, instead of worrying about the paperwork of, oh my gosh, like I've got to fill in this form or that form. I need, I need to I need to get back to HR on my action plan from my last employee survey. And the next survey is coming up. I have no time to do this. So, so we found, it was really interesting, like realizing that that was the problem instead. And if we had turned to all of our competitors, what we realized was that all of them were we're building really sophisticated action planning, tracking and monitoring tools. But we realized that our, at least our customers, that was not their problem. The, mm. the problem that they were facing was that this was just so far outside their day-to-day work that it was not helping them at all. So, so that, I mean, that's just a recent example. That's very fascinating, actually, CT. You know, it seems to me, if I understand you correctly, your uh, 
initially you will mainly talk to the HR manager because you thought these are your customers, but actually they are not the users of your products. So you run into the gap between so-called customers and the users. So you went one step further to look at the real motivation, the behavior change of the users, then kind of a thinking about the products from that perspective. Is that correct way to frame it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. And and then we realized that by going deeper into making sure we deliver value to the users, that would then deliver value to our buyers because we're B2B. Yeah. So, so the, the buyers are our users to a certain extent, but the real people that actually interface with our product are not the buyers. So we had to mm. bridge this, this, this uh, disconnect. That's very, thank you, actually. It's a very interesting, very, very insightful story. Thank you for watching.